Okay. Weight loss journey 2023. Let's do this. Hey guys, happy new year. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Lauren. I'm a mom refreshing my weight loss journey post having baby number two. Before getting pregnant with my second daughter, I lost 80 pounds following the WW Blue plan. I'm currently eight months postpartum. I have an eight month old baby girl named Nora, as well as an almost five year old daughter, Lila. And with the new year, January 1st, 2023, I am so, so ready to kick back into my fitness gear. I'm excited to utilize the new WW plan and all the changes that came with it when the new plan released in November of 2022. It's very similar to the WW Blue plan, which is what I lost 80 pounds on before getting pregnant. And in today's video, I want to share with you guys my January 1st weigh in my official restart on my weight loss journey with the new WW plan. I'm sharing my weight, my measurements, my new set of before photos, as well as talking through some of my goals for 2023 and specifically what I'm going to be working on and focusing on in January. So when I first started sharing my weight loss journey with the WW here on YouTube, I was sharing monthly weigh-ins as well as focuses for the month of different areas I wanted to work on with my health, whether it was exercise, drinking more water, working on flexibility, walking more. And all of those updates not only I think helped to create a community of everyone else who wanted to join in whatever the focus was for the month, and sharing this experience of getting healthy together, it also really motivated me to keep going with my determination, my goals, kept me accountable. So I really wanna go back to some of that format, how I used to share where at the beginning of the month, I was sharing my way in for accountability, talking through goals more often, and making note of things that weren't just my number on the scale weight. So pictures and measurements, as well as working on other areas of my overall health, whether it was mental, emotional, or physical health. I am a mom of two small children. Life is crazy and busy. I have a husband who goes out of town and works really late hours certain times during the year, and we've moved a number of times for his job. So a lot of times life can just feel lonely when you're in this phase of life with little kids and a husband who works a lot and you're always moving. So I really found YouTube and this community to be such a great source of support. I'm so happy to have all of you guys in my corner, and I hope you know I'm here cheering you on in yours. I look forward to sharing more what I eat in a days on the WW plan to help share new ideas with you guys and recipes, sharing my grocery hauls and meal prepping videos and even just daily life vlogs to see how I'm applying what I talk about with my goals and my meal planning in our day to day life. So if you're new, hit that red subscribe button. That's what this channel's about. Please hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it. It really helps my channel and helps recommend it to other people so we can keep growing our community of support here on YouTube. But now that you know who I am and what I'm about and what this channel's about, let's get into talking about my fresh start for 2023. Okay, here it is. My first weigh in of 2023, it's January 1st. Let's see where we're starting at with my rebooted weight loss journey after being postpartum for eight months. Here we go. It's my first time back in this set that I used to share my like measurement weigh-ins monthly. We're not hiding or sharing measurements because I feel like you can tell so much your difference month to month by also looking at pictures and measurements in addition to just weighing yourself and seeing the numbers on the scale. So I highly encourage anyone else out there who is starting a weight loss journey, take your measurements every month. Take pictures every month because sometimes what you're putting in the work and doing, you're not seeing always on the scale reflected. So take those other measurements of progress so you can feel encouraged and motivated to keep going because we're not giving up. We're getting to our goals this year. I am 5'9". My starting weight was 320 pounds after the holidays. I'm wearing a size 2X in pants, which is like a size 18-20 in US pant sizes, a size 2X in sports bras, 2X in tops, again, like a size 20. That is up four pounds from where I weighed in earlier this month. However, it's also January 1st, and I know for a fact when I didn't track what I was eating yesterday on New Year's Eve, there were drinks, there were salty foods, there was not a lot of water, and honestly, the baby didn't sleep great last night. So I'm kind of striking out and being prepared for this weigh-in today. 
So I think what I'm going to do for the month of January too, just to kind of track how my progress is going a little bit more accurately than just doing the one beginning of the month weigh in and share with you guys. I mean, I weigh myself every week normally, but I normally only share my monthly weigh in here on my channel. I think this month for January, we all need some extra motivation to just keep at the program. No matter what you see on the scale, just keep at it. Persistence will pay off. So I'm excited to see what my next weigh-in will be. I usually weigh in on Fridays too. And today is Sunday, January 1st. So my next weigh-in will be this coming Friday. I will weigh myself and maybe I'll do like a vlog that day and I'll share it on the channel here next Monday. Um, so I can truly see like uh, is this four pounds up that I got today starting off the year truly just because I have had my flex days for the holidays which again I'm not gonna get down or mad on myself about I had some family time I took the stress of managing and tracking everything I was eating off my plate for some of those holiday days although I did do pretty well sticking to the plan in December in between so who knows we all know our bodies can go up and down multiple pounds a day I mean I know I know mine does. I can seriously go up and down like two, three pounds a day just based on bloat or what I've been eating or anyway. That's where I'm starting in 2023 is at 320 pounds. I will do another weigh in on Friday after having been back on track and on plan for six days. See kind of where my weight levels out and I'll be sharing that here on the channel. Let's talk my goals for 2023. So the big one and I have never set like a yearly weight loss goal before, like specifically how many pounds I want to lose in a year. It was just a work in progress. I am definitely a bit of a competitive person, even more so when I'm just competing against myself. So this year I decided I do want to set a number in mind. I didn't want it to be unattainable. I didn't want it to be too easy. I wanted it to be something where I know I'm going to have to work for this. I'm going to have to keep myself mostly on track, but there is flexibility to still live life. If we do go on a family vacation, I'm not going to be worried about what I eat every day that I'm on vacation. When there's some holidays, like when we just had Christmas, I didn't count my points on Christmas. I let myself enjoy time with my family. It's not that I necessarily shoved everything I could into my mouth and ate a million cookies. I was aware of what I was eating because I just am aware now. Having been focused on health and weight loss for so long, I am aware I'm just not so restrictive on everything on some of those special days. So I wanted to make a goal that would allow me to feel like I had the flexibility when I wanted but also that would motivate me to really stick to my plan this year. So in 2023, I want to lose 60 pounds. And I think this is really attainable for me. That breaks down to just five pounds a month and keeps me on track with a reasonably recommended one to two pounds a week. I'm sure there will be some months that I lose more, some months I lose less. Heck, there are going to be some weeks that I have gains and that's okay. That's a part of this cycle that is weight loss and your body rebalancing as you're eating less or more or changing up your carbs and proteins or however you're managing your weight loss ebbs and flows are going to come. So I think that keeping that average of five pounds a month will allow me to be really productive towards that goal. I think it's really attainable, which is important, but it's also going to keep me on track. So that's my big push for the year. I have also made a mid-year, I mean, it's a little bit less than mid-year, but a mid-year goal that I would like to be back to my pre-baby weight by my daughter's birthday. My daughter was born in late April, so for my May 1st weigh-in, I would like to be down 20 pounds from where I am now. Okay, so those are my specific weight loss goals for the year. The other healthy habit goals that I want to get back to, where I know when I was doing these things, I felt so much better. I had so much energy. I felt like my mind was clear. I was sleeping better. My mood overall was better. I felt like I was a better mom when I did these things because of my mood and attitude being more positive. So that includes, I want to start my morning with water. This one I've been so terrible about the last couple months. 
especially because we've gone through a number of sleep regressions with Nora and when you're so tired, sometimes all you can think about when you're up super early in the morning and you know it's you're awake for the day, the baby's not going back to sleep and it looks like 5 a.m. is your new wake up time, even if she's been awake multiple other times during the night. Do I want to start my morning with water? No, I'm looking for coffee. So that's something I've been really bad about the last couple months. I've started my day with coffee, and then for some reason, when I start that way, I just get out of the habit and I don't drink my water throughout the day. So I wanna start my day with water, following that with something healthy and filling to eat, a good breakfast. And then a little bit later in the morning, after I've had some water, after I've had some food, I can enjoy a cup of coffee. So when I was doing that regularly on a regular basis before, my day was so much better. I felt so much more productive starting my day with water, hydrating it, and food, something in my stomach and not drinking coffee and then having no water and no food until mid-afternoon. Because a lot of times I would all of a sudden realize around three o'clock I'd start feeling kind of grumpy and hungry and realize, oh, I haven't eaten anything today, just had coffee. So I wanna get back to my water first mentality and speaking of water, the amount of water I'm drinking on a daily basis has totally tanked since I weaned my youngest daughter from nursing. So when I was nursing, I was thirsty all the time. I was chugging back water, no problem. Ever since I weaned her, I slowly lost the craving for water throughout the day and I just haven't been making a point of thinking about it throughout the day. So I know recommendations for water are all over the place. A lot of people say half your body weight in ounces of water, but for me, starting at 320 pounds would be 160 ounces of water a day. Uh, no, that's, that's not gonna happen, that's too much water. Some people say a gallon of water a day, which is 128 ounces, that's more reasonable to me because I broke that down to, normally I use this as my water thermos, and this is a 32 ounce thermos, Yes, she has a little dent in her, she's well loved, but that means I need to drink four of these in a day. And for me, when I was really drinking and thinking about my water intake, that was pretty easy, because I would consume one of these first thing in the morning, along with breakfast and just running around and stuff, and then have my coffee, and then I would try and refill it around noon, refill it again by the time I'm getting dinner and stuff ready, and then I would fill it one more time in the evening and slowly sip on it while my husband and I are hanging out. So that way I would finish it up, you know, a little bit before bedtime, so you know, you're not needing to pee all night. So for me, 120 ounces, a gallon of water is four of those tumblers. It's pretty doable. That might not be right for everyone though. A lot of people still thrive on the six to eight, eight ounce glasses of water every day, coming into 40 to 60-ish ounces a day. So talk with your doctor or your medical professional that you're working with on your health goals and find what's gonna be a good number for you. The next goal is to be active daily. I'm not necessarily talking about going from me, to be honest, not really working working out at all in a formal workout sense since having my baby. Um, but getting back to just being active every day. So whether that's going outside for a walk or doing some yoga during my youngest daughter's nap time while my preschooler is at school, finding a way to get active every day. Playing outside, playing outside is a great way to be active with your kids when you're first getting back into the habit. So I would like to start there and then I would like to work my way to walking every day along with eventually trying to join a gym again for the first time in a few years. I haven't been back to a gym since uh, pre-pandemic. I was with a gym working out on a pretty regular basis before the pandemic hit and then the gyms closed and I canceled my membership because I just wasn't ready to bring my kids back to that childcare environment. So I think this year, you know, maybe once we get out of cold and flu season, because again, I only have an eight month old, I don't want to be putting her at risk in a gym daycare to pick up a bunch of illnesses. So between, you know, getting out of cold flu season a little bit and getting to a point in the year where my husband's work hours get a little bit easier, where maybe I'm able to run and get a gym session in while he's home with the kids, um, working towards that and getting back to working out three times a week with some weight resistance. 
maybe some group exercise classes. So that is kind of one of my big fitness goals for the year, starting out just getting active daily, moving to walking and workouts at home, and then joining a gym when I feel ready and comfortable to be back in that environment. To kickstart that goal here in January, as a family, we are participating in a 40 mile dog walk challenge for St. Jude's. My husband actually told me about the challenge and said he really wanted to sign us up for it to do with our dog, Millie. Our sweet Cocker Spaniel girl will be six years old next week. And starting out healthy habits as a family is something that really excites us. We love the idea of getting outside. We are lucky enough to live in Georgia where the weather isn't terrible in the winter. So I have no excuse in the winter. We need to get outside, get active as a family, walk our dog daily. It's good for our family. It's good for our dog. It's good for your mental health. Feeling that fresh sunshine and fresh air. So today was day number one and we went on a walk in our neighborhood. But the challenge with St. Jude is that we are going to cumulatively as a family walk our dog 40 miles during the month of January. We are raising funds for St. Jude. I will put the link down in the description box below. Please, you don't have to feel obligated to donate or anything, but if you're interested in supporting that cause, you can click the link in my description box below. But if getting back to activity on a regular basis or figuring out some way that's motivating to get yourself back and going, with your walking, with your fitness goals, is something that's important to you, I highly encourage finding something like this. Find a cause that's important to you, a fundraiser to help with, maybe sign up for a 5K or a walk run event that's local to you, and then you're able to work towards something, there's excitement about it, and it keeps you accountable for actually getting out there and doing it, and not knowing that you're just tired one day, and the kids have been hard, and you still haven't made dinner, and I don't have time to work out today you know you have something important to work for and you find a way to fit it into that daily crazy life. So I'm really excited to be doing this challenge with St. Jude's. I'm excited for our family about it. So that is kind of January's focus is getting back to daily activity and we're doing that through being accountable with this 40 mile dog walking challenge with St. Jude's. And obviously Millie is ecstatic about it as well. And then finally, one of my last health and fitness goals for the year is to come prepared with food. I have my weeks where I'm really on top of my meal planning and getting groceries ahead of time and meal prepping, but there have been plenty of days and weeks I haven't. And those are the days that I break down and say, let's just get takeout or I'll make something quick that's in the pantry like mac and cheese and air fryer chicken nuggets. And I'm not saying that those nights won't happen because they definitely will. Let's be realistic. However, one of my goals is going to be to start truly working on maybe building out my meal planning, getting back into the habit of planning my dinner meals for the month. I got really good about that during the pandemic when everyone was shut at home and I was trying to limit how often I went to the grocery store and I was just putting in grocery order pickups, like one large pickup a month, and then maybe a second smaller one two weeks in but I was looking at my calendar and truly planning out what was for dinner every single night of the month for a month at a time, and that's how I shopped. I feel like I saved money, which can't hurt during the crazy inflation with food right now. I always had a plan ahead of time, so the night before, I could look at what was on my plan for dinner the next night, and if I needed to pull anything meat-wise to defrost overnight into the fridge, I could. I was always prepared. I wasn't waiting until 4 p.m. that day to figure out what I was making my family for dinner. So that was one big stressor off my mind. I felt prepared. I knew I had everything everything grocery-wise that I needed. So I wanna work my way back to that. I'm gonna start this month just truly setting out to do a full week's meal plan at a time and make sure I'm grocery shopped before that day. And I'm also going to start trying to meal prep lunches for myself and then have a few ideas prepped for some easy breakfasts. So I just wanna get better about meal planning in general. Eventually getting to that phase where I'm planning a month out for dinners, but also trying to weekly meal prep for myself. Okay, that's a lot of goals. And that's why I talk about these are my goals for the year. I'm gonna slowly start trying to work on all of them throughout the year, building myself up to get more comfortable in these healthy habits. This month's focus again is just getting active daily. We have our St. Jude's challenge. I gotta start remembering to fill my water and keep drinking 
drinking it throughout the day, hopefully getting a good meal plan ready to go and meal prepping at the beginning of the week so I have easy, healthy options. So there's no excuses during our busy life. We can stay on track. It just takes some prep and some planning and some motivation. So thank you guys for listening to my 2023 goals. Please let me know what your goals for 2023 are in the comments down below. We have a plan, we're getting prepared, and we're gonna execute this year. Again, thank you guys so much for supporting me on my journey. I can't wait to help you out on yours. Make sure you are subscribed and hit the like button, and until next time, bye.